Hey everyone, back again with another video, and today we are going to edit this. So this is kind of an interesting challenge. This wrap is very similar to what you see OEM manufacturers use to hide body lines on their car and kind of distorts the angles and things like that. And my friend Nick decided to wrap his car like this and it makes it really difficult to take pictures of. And I was kind of curious to see what I could do with it. So after a show, we actually arranged a little car shoot and I'm gonna take you through the edit of one of the photos. And this is kind of the setup. So essentially what I did is I went through and I did a bracketed HDR and you will see that there is actually two sets. So I use the polarizer for the front window you can see here. And then this series of shots is polarized for the side window so we get rid of those reflections. Um, the other interesting thing about this is you'll see he has a pretty big cow hood so we're actually gonna use the side polarization on here and we'll use the top and front polarization for the front. You can see how this uh, really reflects the sky in here. Um, and same thing over here for this side. Uh, but here and on the windshield, this is good. So um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we have our different sets here. So you can see up here what I was using to shoot this. So I was at ISO 100. I actually shot this at 200 millimeter at f2.8 and this one was uh, one four thousandths of a second so if we click through you can see that it just drops down by about a stop each time. So you can see that these ones are basically the same thing so we're still shooting at ISO 100, we're still at 200 millimeters, we're still at f2.8. The exposure may change just a little bit. Um, it was kind of cloudy, it was going in and out so but that shouldn't make a difference. Once these are merged together, we'll take those two files and then we'll open those in Photoshop. So let's get started. We're gonna click on this first image here. We'll shift click on this one and then we will right click and go to Photo Merge HDR. All right, so the computer has processed that. It's merged everything together. Here's some settings that I use. So I use Auto Align, essentially what Auto Align does is it'll go through if there was any shift in the tripod it'll um, it'll align that I just click auto settings deghosting amount I just keep to low generally I don't shoot in front of things that move that often so this would be helpful if you have like trees blowing in the background or something like that um, so from here we just go ahead and hit merge and then what we're gonna do while that's processing in the background up here you can see we're gonna go to this next set Again, we'll hold down shift, click the first, click the last, and then we're going to do the same thing all over again and just go photo merge HDR. Use a 42 megapixel camera, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Oh, you shoot HDR and you merge five photos together. All right, so the computer's process those and here is the result again same settings so we're just going to go ahead and click merge all right and so that one has finished publishing as well you can tell down here we have the merge file and you can tell a because it looks properly exposed and b it has these two little icons here so you can see this series has it and then this series over here has it so what we want to do is we want to click on this one and then command click on the second one then we want to right click again and we're going to go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop so now what this is going to do is this is going to open those in Photoshop under the same document name and it's going to put those two layers on top of each other you can click on and off you can see the difference the polarization has made um, you can also see that the photos have shifted ever so slightly. So one thing that I like to do right off the bat when I do this is I shift click the two together and then I go up to edit auto align layers and then just click OK. And so what this does is Photoshop's going to go through 
it's going to analyze the image and it's going to perfectly align those two layers. So if there was any shift in the tripod or anything like that, um, it'll go ahead and take care of that for you. So now what we want to do is we want to find out which layer is which. So we can tell here that this, the top layer is the windshield and the front of the car and the bottom layer is going to be the side of the car. So we really want to keep the window layer from that bottom one, but we want the windshield layer from the top one. So let's go ahead and another thing with this car that's kind of interesting is normally on, let's say my car or a black car or something that reflects things, I would normally use the side polarization to get rid of any reflections on the side. But you can see in this image that actually kind of hurts us with this wrap theme. So I think we need to make a decision. Do we want more of that even color or do we want to keep some of those body lines? So it might be more interesting to use the front polarization for the side as well. So we keep some of these body lines and highlights in here and then really just use that for the window and then the hood. So I think that's what we'll do. So let's actually move this top layer to the bottom because there's going to be more of that that we're going to keep. And then this top layer, we will go ahead and put a black mask on that. And then what that's going to allow us to do is we will just go in with our brush tool. So we're going to hit B for brush. We're going to use our bracket key to make our brush a little bit bigger. And we're going to paint in white right on this side window. Maybe we'll go up into this a little bit. And if you go too far, you can just hit X and then you can kind of go back and paint it and blend it in. Um, and then let's zoom in a little bit. And so if you want on the hood, since we're going to be kind of close to this other body line, what you could do is you can take your pen tool you can draw right on that body line and we want to just come back up here so now that's going to give us a really clean line that we're going to paint in and so here if you don't want um, if you don't want this circle, so if I click here now, it makes a circle or it makes it curved. If you don't want that, you can option click on this one right here and then it'll just make it a straight line. So now if we do that and we click make selection, we'll just do one pixel feather. That gives us a nice selection here. And if we are on this layer mask and we paint in white, we can just paint right in there. We don't have to worry about going too far or anything like that. And then if we hit Command D, you can see that still gives us that really nice highlight right there on the edge, but, but we get rid of that really bright highlight. So I think that looks pretty good from a window slash reflection standpoint. Um, depending on how you like your wheels, we can look and see what the polarization looks like on those. So if we go back to our brush tool, and I think the highlight actually looks a little bit better on that. Generally what I do when I do, when I use my polarizer, I will use the wheels and the windshield, and then I will use the side window and the side. But I always use the wheels from the windshield. I think it looks a little bit more bright. It shows off the highlights more. So I think the next thing we can do is probably work on our crop a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and commit to this. So I'm going to hit Shift, Command, Option, and E to make a merge layer. And I will go to my crop tool. And we'll just pull this in a little bit.
I'm going to hit enter. So there we are. So now the first thing I want to do is this photo has had zero processing whatsoever. It hasn't even had like initial color or exposure um, done to it in Lightroom. So I think we want to start with that. So we're going to go up here to camera raw filter. So let's bring some attention to the car and I want to do that by darkening the sky a little bit. That's probably pretty extreme. We don't need that much blue and it doesn't need to be that dark. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to darken this foreground. And again, we don't need we don't need that much blue there. I think the exposure is fine. And actually, I'm going to pull down the saturation just a little bit. Um, the next thing that I would like to do is probably add a little bit of clarity to the overall image. I think cars always look a little bit better with clarity. And they also, I think they look a little bit better with some contrast. Um, this car in particular, just because of the finishes, so with the glossy carbon fiber uh, and then the wing here, and then also with the parking garage, I just think that that really, really helps the photo quite a bit. Um, I think we will go in here and we will get rid of some of that uh, blue. And we can probably do that with this. So if we, maybe if we pull this more at an angle, we'll keep it in the sky and get it off of there a little bit. I think the shadows are good. I think the highlights are good. I don't think we need to really mess with the exposure. We can probably sharpen this up a little bit. We may do that later as well. So I think we're good for right now. Let's go ahead and click OK. There, I think that looks, I think that's looking a little bit better. Uh, the next thing I want to do is make a new layer. And then we're going to go over to Silver Effects Pro. And then we're going to go down here to High Structure Harsh. And what I like about this is I like that look that this um, technique gives to the concrete in the background. So we're going to hit OK on that. So you can see here we have a black and white image now, but what we're going to do is we're going to go from normal and we're going to change the blend mode to luminosity. And you can see that the texture that that really gave to um, the parking garage. Now, if you don't like what it's doing to the sky, you can come back in with a layer mask and you can just paint in black right over the top of that and then it pulls that right out. So one thing that I want to do is I want to make the wheels pop a little bit more. So let's go to hue and let's go to hue and saturation and let's make this saturation a little bit higher. And actually, let's try to go to the blues and let's pop that saturation up. Maybe not that high. I think that looks good. So here, we don't want to apply this to the whole image. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this layer mask with black. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush and painting in white, we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna paint right over those wheels. I think this is more true to what they actually look like in person. And if you want, now that we have just that there, we can go in and we can pull the saturation of that a little bit more if we want. So that's how you can affect one component of the image as far as saturation without affecting the whole image. I don't think we need to do a lot more to this, to be honest with you. I think it's, I think it's a pretty solid image. I think um, to help spice up the top here, something that I've kind of been stuck on lately and I don't know why is I like this little kind of fake sunburst just coming in, this little like pop of light. 
And essentially what I do is I just make a new layer. I grab my um, gradient tool and you can see here I have the second, the radial gradient, and then I just have white. And what I do is I just kind of pull that into the image there. Kind of gives from a light to dark feel, helps kind of drag the eye across the frame. Um, I think the last thing we want to do is kind of just sharpen this image up. So let's hit Command, Option, Shift, and E to make another merged visible layer. And then um, I want to show you a way that sometimes I sharpen, and I think it might be good for this image. So if you take that merge visible layer, you come up here and you go to High Pass. So now, essentially what you see here is you see what's going to be sharpened by this process. So you can see all the different texture lines. Um, you can see the wheels, the headlights, the front grill. Um, so we're going to keep that down around 2. You don't want to go too high. If you get too high, you'll start seeing that it starts introducing um, color and artifacts and things like that. That's what you don't want. So we just want to basically see the outlines of what we want sharpened. So we're going to click OK on that. And you can see we have this gray layer right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our blending modes and we are going to change that to soft light. So soft light is like stage one of sharpening. You can change how much this affects the image by changing between these three different uh, blending modes here. So soft light is the most conservative. Hard light would be the next. So you can see everything got a little bit sharper. And then vivid light is like full blast. So you can see, we'll toggle this on and off, maybe even see it. You can see how everything just got much sharper there. Um, I think we'll go right in the middle, so we'll go hard light. That's before and after. So you can see those lines are just a little bit sharper. Um, and I think we'll call that our final image. So we'll go ahead and just save that out and call it good. So hopefully you like this video. Hopefully um, this taught you kind of how to merge those two different polarized layers, how you can use HDR and polarization together. And then we also talked about sharpening and kind of selective hue and saturation adjustments. So hopefully you learned something in this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, take care.